Hi all, my name is Chris Everly and this is my Ento Inspiration video about insects and light polarization for Entomology 160D with Professor Tristan McKnight. In this video I will start by talking briefly about what light polarization is, then talk about how insects interact much more with light polarization than humans do, including the special case of scarab beetles and circularly polarized light. Then I'll finish with some practical applications and why you should care at all about insects interacting with light polarization. So first off, what is light polarization? As many of you likely already know, light is made up of two components, an electric and magnetic field that oscillate perpendicular to each other and to the direction of light propagation, as shown in the diagram. This means that as light propagates, both of these fields are popping out in a very specific direction. However, what is not shown in the diagram is that the electric field is much, much greater than the magnetic field. Hence, we use the electric field angle to characterize this directionality. Now, this is all dandy, but why should we care? Well, it turns out that a large portion of the light in our everyday life actually has a dominant mode of polarization. We just cannot perceive the difference with our own unaided eyes. However, some insects, like bees, can actually make that distinction. For example, most of the light that reflects off of a specular surface, like water, is actually horizontally polarized. The picture on the left is how we would normally see the stream, and the picture on the right is taken with a polarizer that eliminates horizontally polarized light. That indicates that almost all of the reflected light is horizontally polarized. We can't make this distinction on our own, but bees can. Bees and other insects have been using this specialized talent to help them navigate using the sun. The sunlight's interaction with the ozone layer creates a consistent pattern of light polarization that can be used to find out where the sun is, even on a cloudy day. So, how are insects able to make this distinction while we can't? Well, insects can detect polarized light due to a specific microvillar structure and rapid neural impulse response. Basically, the microvillar structure delays certain polarization states, then the neurons in the eye and the brain are able to detect and differentiate the time delay if the input light favors any certain angle of polarization. This diagram shows a study that was done where scientists were able to detect the neural response in the eyes of grasshoppers. The grouping for specific angles shows that the eyes of the grasshoppers became more stimulated for a specific angle of polarization and that this, this was different for different wavelengths of light. Now there is a particularly interesting insect light interaction that occurs in scarab beetles. Some scarab beetles are able to produce and detect circularly polarized light. Circularly polarized light is a mode of polarization that is extremely rare in nature. It can be created by adding two perpendicularly polarized waves with a specific phase difference of 90 degrees. Helicoidal microstructures in the scarab beetle's cuticle have different indices of refraction in two axes. This directional difference in index of refraction delays one axis of the input light more than the other, which, when reflected back out of the cuticle, produces a rare circularly polarized light. Researchers have determined that these beetles are more attracted to circularly polarized light than random or linearly polarized light. This indicates that the beetles are able to differentiate between those types of polarizations. However, we still don't know quite how they're able to do it. Still, scarab beetle cuticles can produce circularly polarized light, and knowing how that works could be very useful. Circularly polarized light is hard to produce, and a lot of tech applications actually require it. Currently, how we produce that type of polarization is via the use of quarter wave plates that often cost up to $1,000 each. Using scarab beetle cuticle, or derivatives of it, could be a much cheaper alternative for tech that already requires circularly polarized light. We could possibly use the cuticles as a reflecting background in microscopes when looking at crystal structures like fossils or petrified substances. Using a circularly polarized background can tell us more information about the crystal axis, which lets us, lets us know how those crystals were formed. We could also use scarab beetle cuticles as a much cheaper alternative when creating devices like optical isolators for low power laser applications. 
Well, I see I'm over time now, but in closing, examining how insects interact with polarized light and the structures that they use to create and detect certain polarization states could be a useful resource when developing future technology. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to listen, guys.